it's really interesting to me how, how many of the artists who submitted to the show are thinking about landscape in one way or another. I mean, in a kind of expanded definition of the word, I guess. <coughs> but we have people looking at kind of, uh, kind of, kind of bleak commercial landscape of, you know, like uh, economic downturn. <coughs> but, you know, it's very much an American scene. There are American scene pictures, kind of not uh, all that inspiring in some ways, a little depressing. <coughs> and then we have, you know, this landscape, which comes out of, you know, the, the mind of video gamers and uh, <coughs> kind, of, kind of an electronic landscape of, of war and, you know, and, uh, and battle and that kind of cyberspace mentality, but it's no less a landscape. There are a lot of people living in this space, in this landscape today. And they're kind of disturbing. Kind of gives me a, a sense of the Chicago Harry Who kind of uh, sensibility also, that kind of urban uh, sensibility, bright colors and kind of strange space. And I'm really uh, uh, interested to see how this, how this piece works out when the artist is finished <coughs> installing, installing it because he seems to have taken, you know, as something out of the kind of vocabulary of Diebenkorn, <coughs> but also thinking about the relationship of these pictures to the walls themselves and the way that these kind of, they kind of feel like topographical maps. They, you know, look like landscapes from above. <coughs> but the way he relates them to the wall by then painting the wall out in these kind of, uh, these kind of shadows is, is really kind of, uh, kind of beautiful. We won't really know until we see them, uh, will we? But uh, they seem, seem terrific. And <coughs> of course, you know, you know, in this kind of Lincoln season, where there's been all this thinking about Lincoln because of Abraham Lincoln vampire killer and Abraham Lincoln, the kind of hagiographic, <coughs> you know, uh, uh, the great hagiographic film that, that, that uh, Tony Kushner wrote. To see this kind of completely irreverent take on Lincoln is kind of wonderful. And wonderful use of cast glass also. So I, I like this piece a lot. It's, it's stupid in an interesting way. You know, and there's something wonderfully ironic about this, about this um, very fragile ceramic bat on this enormously heavy and solid concrete base. And I, I think there's great humor in this also, but it's rather poignant. Beautiful, also in its kind of the minimalist vocabulary <coughs> being used in, in ways that I don't think minimalists had any intention of using. But more like, you know, something inspired by the kind of bizarre sense of humor of a, someone like a Neil Jenny, you know. But I see that, you know, she has this hole in the back of the bat, and I have a feeling that at, uh, <coughs> at one point she had thought about hanging that bat. I wonder if that hole is supposed to actually be under. Do you see what I mean over here, yeah. Jeff? Yeah, if that's supposed to be under to not reveal that, right. my guess. But still, it made me think that she, at one point, thought of hanging that on the wall, which would have been much less interesting than putting it in, co in contrast to this 250-pound this yeah. concrete base. <coughs> and these, these, these paintings, <coughs> these abstract paintings are absolutely beautiful. And making, you know, making use of a very cu current vocabulary of abstraction, <coughs> um, but I think in a, in a, ver a very wholly original way. I mean, they're, they're kind of ugly, but they, but they hold together and they become beautiful in their own weird way. I mean, by all rights, these should be really ugly pictures, but they're not. There's something compelling about them. And of course, here, I mean, you know, uh, I'm very attracted to this vocabulary and to this use of domestic material and, and the kind of humor that's in, in this artist's work. 
uh, you know, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm partial to it because, especially because I think about Eva Hess and I think about Louise Bourgeois and I think about, you know, <laughs> the, the, the kind of use of that material by those artists, that are, but here by this, uh, by this man, Joseph uh, Madrigal, and I think it's kind of interesting that he's using these kind of domestic forms here. Explores something rather surreal and, and very strange. And of course, how can we not love this, this beautiful combination of, of really grotesque things here? You know, that are playful and fun, but you know, uh, there's something. You know, the way they're wrapped in this plastic, the way you would wrap something that's going to be put in storage or something. Something kind of poignant about it, and weird, and like the way it's jammed here under the wall and under the <coughs> under the ceiling here is something really uncomfortable about it. And you know, it's so not involved with any any notion of craft, and yet uh, it's actually put together very well. Extraordinary. And this painter, I think, is, has also captured something um, out of nature, a little bit more dreamlike and, you know, and kind of almost psychedelic. But I, I like the space that, that he's created here in this work on canvas and these works on paper, which are, you know, are really quite evocative and beautiful. And of course, this installation, which is not on right now, but I think it's amazing. This is one of, one of my favorite works in the show. I'm really glad it's, it's here. <coughs> the, the, you know, the combination of this kind of completely strange architectural space <coughs> falling in on itself and so, so oppressive and, and at the same time, you know, so kind of, uh, kind of um, domestic and sweet, you know, it has all the, the power of, you know, uh, of that, this kind of psychological mise-en-scene that I think she's trying to create here. And when the video is on and we have this, this sense of uh, entrapment and, and beauty together, it's quite, I think it's quite good. Now, all in all, I see, you know, uh, you know, like in these these landscape photographs, which are absolutely stunning. You know, a real sense of the of the American scene again, and you know, but is this picture here less about the American scene? You know, this kind of <coughs> this picture using the kind of the vocabulary of of contemporary Chinese pop art in a way. I mean, I you know, I would. S I would more expect to see that coming out of out of out of Tokyo or Beijing, than out of uh, you know the north the, the American Northeast. <coughs> but there's something strangely weirdly wonderful about it, and uh, you know uh, you know this idea of Miss Rangel, this kind of unbelievably antique concept of of naming some girl every year after a beer. And having, uh, I don't know if you were, you were too young, but in the subways, there would be all these posters. You got to vote for who Ms. Rheingold was going to be every year. It was this bizarre thing. So the, using that concept against this kind of, uh, you know, uh, this kind of um, landscape of Japanese, <coughs> you know, Godzilla, and then the kind of, uh, out of the kind of uh, 19th century Japanese printmaking kind of imagery, <coughs> and then this kind of Japanese text. And yet, you know, this whole thing, you know, it's, it's just wrong. You know, something wonderfully wrong about this painting. Hmm. You know, and these, these, these ceramic figures, they really, they feel like they were dug up from some <clears throat> you know, archaeological dig on another planet. Uh, you know, I just, they're, they're completely strange. And, and also slightly creepy. There's something kind of uh, wrong here also, you know, and I like that about these, about these works. I mean, these are, they, they don't, 
these are not arcing towards being beautiful. They're arcing towards being disturbing, <coughs> and they succeed. And finally, is this really <laughs> this really very nondescript kind of domestic patio scene? Could be anyone's backyard here in Connecticut or whatever, but there's something like from you know, like a, a long forgotten memory. You know, I, again, using a vocabulary that I think we have seen kind of in paintings by the Belgian Luke Toymans and people like that, but using it to describe this kind of American domestic landscape in a way that's no less evocative and depressing. It's not a very lighthearted show, uh, with the exception maybe of the of the Lincoln piece. It's a show that's pretty heavy. Uh, people are are concerned about real things here, yeah. and uh, I think that's. That's important. I'm very moved by this uh, man's drawings on, uh, <coughs> on, 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 uh, on texts from biblical texts or historical books. Again, you know, thinking about. Tim Rollins and his use of that vocabulary with with his kids, or <coughs> or the the late Russian artist Dmitry Prigov, who made all these kind of newspaper drawings when he was imprisoned in, in the Soviet Union, to see this the same technique used here and to recognize you know the the potential of you know the connections between these texts and the images. I mean, it'll be interesting to see when this is installed properly. You know, it's terrible to be looking at these works when they're just Leaning, but uh, I, I have a feeling that, that that piece is going to is going to really work very well. And, and this piece here, which is very hard to look at, impossible to look at on a camera, I would think. Uh, but it, it, you know, it, it really makes me think of these uh, old Chinese landscapes, <coughs> or even the landscape paintings of the, an artist like the contemporary Chinese painter Zhu Bing makes these landscape paintings. But there's, you know, so there's this kind of Chinese ethos in these, but they're not at all Chinese. These are very, you know, American pictures using this this uh, Asian vocabulary. In particular, this you know this Chinese kind of um, scroll vocabulary, beautifully made and and hard, slow, slow pictures, pictures that you really have to look at carefully and think about and enter, you know, um, carefully. And taking that same approach to this kind of um, this uh, handmade book is quite wonderful. I think uh, one would want to sit down with this. I mean, it'll be nice to see this displayed on the shelf and lit properly. But finally, at the end of the day, this is a work that you want to hold in your hand, like any artist book, and and have that kind of intimate relationship to it. Because I think it, you know, it 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 wants to be, it wants a certain kind of intimacy. You know, I mean. Her work in general kind of demands you to get right into the work, and I think that's quite quite wonderful. So I'm not sure what this show, if, you know, if, if these any of these kind of uh, regional shows where people from all over a large region submit work to be juried rather randomly can say anything about the moment that they're being made. I I think that would be pretentious and ridiculous to 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 make any kind of Con any kind of conclusion based on what I found interesting in this group of works submitted by how many? 400 artists submitted to this show, which is quite remarkable. But I, but I would say that there's a, a level of seriousness that I find completely admirable and, you know, and extraordinarily inventive uses of existing vocabularies and, and, and the kind of recombination of vocabularies in some ways that are, that are I think are Quite original and moving. You know, and finally, there's that video, uh, Heresies, 
which I think at this moment needs to be looked at. I mean, it's, a, it's terrific to see a, wor a work that's thinking about uh, artists like uh, Pussy Riot, you know, and, and other artists who have run afoul of the ability to speak their mind. Uh, and, you know, to putting that in the context of, uh, of, of kind of a feminist discourse, I think is, uh, is very important and, uh, and, and appropriate. So I'm glad to have that in this show as well. I think it's a, <coughs> I think it's a good show. And finally, there are these uh, these figure studies, which I I think in some ways, you know, might, we might see them as rather conventional, but in fact, they're not at all. And again, uh, you know, I think about Louise Bourgeois and the, the impact that she's had on a generation of artists and um, no idea whether this artist was aware of Louise Bourgeois' work or not, but you know, this, this take on the, uh, on the kind of ravages of time on a body and you know, this kind of thinking about the body in sculptural terms, but also in, uh, the body as sculpture yeah, I, I find that I find these pictures really remarkable. Hmm. Thanks, thanks for having me. This has been an interesting experience for me. <laughs>